show, we're headed back to one of our favorite spots up here in Bruce County, Ontario. We're going to be going out hiking the Bruce Trail. Chris, this is a great trail I've heard. I know that it's beautiful up here. Why don't you tell us where we're starting at and what we're going to be seeing? Tom, the Bruce Trail is probably one of the most famous footpaths, a hiking trail in all of Canada. It runs from Niagara Falls all the way to Tobamori, and we are standing right now in Tobamori, which is either the start or the beginning of our hike. And okay. we're going to start here. And what we have is we're going to go down, we're going to start work our way south towards Wyerton, and we're yep. going to go to places like Bruce Peninsula National Park, where we are now. We're going to hike out to the grotto, see those turquoise oh. Caribbean-like waters along the shore. We're going to go down to the, what's called the Devil's Monument near Dyer's Bay. We're going to go see Bruce's Caves. We're going to see Ooh. something called Skinner's Bluff Lookout. We're going to see some amazing rock features along the trail. And the trail's rugged. It's, it's, a, it's a workout, so we've got good hiking shoes. We've got all our gear, and we're going to strike out. But first, I just want to get some practice because we have to practice before we head out. This is a fence crossing, and they put this in the National Park so people know what to do when you see one of these. So why don't you give it a whirl? I'm not even going to tell well, you what you, you do. You, oh. Just try it. Just go for so it. So we're just, this is the fence, okay? This is the fence. So. And you're climbing over the fence. All right. Do you want me to hold your hand? <laughs> Help! There you go. Now, as soon as we get to the top, maybe make a turn. I'm not going to walk down forward, so. Oh, yeah, okay. Perfect. Okay. Because, Excellent. Because that's, the Bruce that's good. Trail crosses a lot of private land. There's a lot of fences in rural areas, and this is just a, a crossing that they have over them. So Perfect. Great. Way to go. Your first major I made it. trail accomplishment. <laughs> what do you say we get going? Let's do it. The Bruce Trail starts its journey in Tobermory and travels over 700 miles following the Niagara Escarpment. It is here on the Bruce Peninsula that the most spectacular hiking on the Bruce Trail occurs. The Bruce Trail was opened in 1967 and is Canada's longest hiking trail. The 150 kilometers of trails on the Bruce Peninsula are considered the best in southern Ontario and offer hiking for the beginner and the veteran hiker. Bruce Peninsula National Park is actually three parks in one. Hikers who like sandy, flat beaches will appreciate Dorcas Bay on the shores of Lake Huron to the west of Highway 6. Those who prefer walks along the limestone cliffs through a mixed forest of aspen, birch, cedar, fir, and spruce will prefer Cypress Lake on the shores of the Georgian Bay to the east of Highway 6. Great view from up here to the park, but uh, we're out doing the trail. Now, where's the trail over here? Okay, you bet. Well, this tower was designed to be just above the canopy here, so it's meant to give you a sort of a bird's eye view of this area. Um, the trail kind of crosses along the shoreline here. You can travel through most of the park along the shoreline and then down through uh, through the inland interior of the park uh, to access uh, the rest of the Bruce Trail. Avenue. Okay, what kind of sites would people see along? The way? Okay, you bet. There's lots of opportunities uh, to see, of course, the interface of water on rock. Tremendous viewing opportunities, really. Some of the most spectacular scenery in southern Ontario can be seen just along the shoreline here in Bruce Peninsula National. Well, and what else, you know, when you're, when you're at the end of the peninsula, what else is there to do? Okay, well, from a park's perspective, we have uh, tremendous hiking opportunities, but also scuba diving, uh, boat tours. One of the must-dos while you're in the area is to go to Flower Pot Island. Uh, it's an ecological treasure, lots of cultural history for you to learn about, and uh, a great experience for, for people to come and enjoy. What about coffee and ice cream, the two staples of a hiker? Oh, is there any of that up here? Yeah, you're hard-pressed not to find some great ice cream and coffee in town. Uh, there's lots of shops. And the great thing about uh, the town site is that it's really close to the Parks Canada Visitor Centre. So you can get the information, plan your trip, and then head on into town to uh, refuel and get some ice cream. And the biggest boat in the harbour is? The MS Tichimon, the ferry that travels from Tobamori to Manitoulin Island, four times a day in the summertime. Perfect. And you can see that from up here as it's going in and out. You bet, yeah. This, uh, this tower gives a really great perspective on here. You can see out to Fathom 5 behind me. You can see Bruce Peninsula National Park in front of me here, the forest cover. It's a great opportunity to uh, really explore your natural and cultural heritage up here. As we started our hike through the Bruce Peninsula National Park, we crossed over a small stream with right. some significance to the park. <laughs> Chris and park naturalist Scott Curry explain. Well, Chris, this is Cypress Lake, uh, really the heart of Bruce Peninsula National Park. Um, this area hosts our campground, as well as uh, tens of thousands of visitors every year who pass through this area to go for a great hike on the Bruce Trail. And this yeah. lake down here, it goes into... Cypress Lake drains into Horse Lake, and you can walk uh, across this bridge and uh, really see this great waterfall. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. You bet. 
Well, Scott, you got us out here to what you call the Indian Head Cove? That's correct. We're in uh, Bruce Peninsula National Park and we're at Indian Head Cove. This area is very popular with our visitors. As you can see, the uh, interface of water on rock is just spectacular. You can't beat it. But what's really remarkable is that this isn't the only spot like this. There are lots of others, and you know what? They're all along the Bruce Trail Corridor. Wow, it's hard to believe you can have so much of it out here. It's true, it's true. This is just one spot of many. And it looks like uh, quite a few other people have found it today. Quite a few, yeah. This is, a, like I said, a popular spot with our campers, with our day hikers. Um, you just can't beat a day on uh, the beach at uh, Indian Head Cove. Now, you're going to have to be careful when you come out to a spot like this. So there's, there's a lot of drops and, and uh, the trail's a little rugged. That's right. You've got to be prepared when you come out here. This isn't a sandy beach. This is a rocky beach, okay? So you need good footwear. You need, of course, sunscreen because on a day like today, you can get cooked pretty quick. And uh, bug spray is important to have as well. Okay. Now, what's our next step? Well, we're actually going to go to the grotto. And uh, that is, by word of mouth, the most spectacular feature in this park. Wow. Well, but cool. I'm ready to get going. Let's go check it out. That means I have to get up. Oh. Yeah, hey, we don't want to break up your rest there. All right, sir. Let's go. Everyone likes to hike to the grotto. It's the most popular attraction in the Bruce Peninsula National Park. A big cave on the shore, it was carved out by the waves of the Georgian Bay over thousands of years. This is a great spot right here. One of the things I like about it, you can see it's kind of pushed in. There's like almost a little bay right here and it gives you a chance to look down the coastline and these rock points jutting out. It's just fabulous out here. We're actually going to try and climb down into it now. Uh, we just go down the rock facing here and uh, hopefully not fall. I don't think we will. I'm not taking this, so that's a little bit too much weight. but I am taking my camera. We ready? It's a pristine setting. There are no signs, lights, stairs, or handrails here. The cave itself is stunning, with sunlight from the outside revealing a brilliant underwater tunnel on the inside. You can walk along the ledge inside the cavity or swim in the cool, clear turquoise water. Okay. Well, Scott, we've gotten down in here, and uh, it's a little bit of a climb down, but it makes it interesting. It's a little challenging, yeah. And remember how I said it's good to have good footwear? Well, case in point, eh? uh, coming down here is a bit of a challenge. Uh, go slow, take your time, be safe, but uh, it can be done. Yeah, well, I noticed it coming down there is a, a lot of places to grip to get your feet. Just make sure you're sitting solid before you make that next move. That's right. And use a, any time you're rock climbing, I think they call it a three point where you keep three pieces, either a hand and two feet attached or two hands and a foot. That's right. One at a time. That and healthy dose of uh, common sense said, yeah, you'll yes. have a great experience. Yes. And now uh, we've got this beautiful grotto down here. And uh, in just a minute, we're going to get that camera down here and uh, hopefully <laughs> and take a closer look at it. Yes, sir. We've actually come down into the grotto now, and Scott, this is amazing down here. How is this formed? Okay, yeah, this is one of our most outstanding features in the park. So the grotto itself was formed by wave action, okay? So waves would come in, shaped out this rock, which is dull stone, and it's relatively soft as far as rocks go, so it's easily shaped by water. In fact, it's still being shaped by water. You notice water dripping down. Well, that's not rain in here. That's water percolating through the rocks, making its way through. So the water that's dripping down now is probably 10, 20, 100 year old water. This oh, fell, no as, kidding. fell as rainwater about 100 years ago, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Maybe itself. even 1,000 years ago. Well, I know it's beautiful down here. Uh, the, we, I see a little light under there. What's going on with that? Yeah, okay, this is a great example of karst topography. And that's a term that sort of describes this cave uh, fissure formation in the rocks. You can actually swim down underneath and out. Uh, it's, it's, swim, it's swimmable, for sure. But uh, we don't recommend it to many people because it's deceiving. It's not as... Uh, Close as it looks yeah, to the other I can side. Imagine that. Yeah. Oh, we did have our. We've got a brave soul that was out here that uh, was swimming around a little bit. Hey, yeah, swimming can't be beat. Uh, Georgian Bay, you just have to uh, tough it out and enjoy it, right? Uh, we like to frame things as a challenge, not as difficult here. So <laughs> okay. it's worth the challenge because of the rewards. So yeah, okay. you, you got to try it. It's a challenge because it's still a little cold. A little it? chilly, yeah. It looks tropical, but that's because the water's so clear. Uh, it is a little chilly, but hey, it's well worth it. Bruce Peninsula Trail Club publishes an annual day hike guide, which is a fantastic tool to navigate around the Bruce Peninsula Bruce Trail systems. 
There are campsites available within the Bruce Peninsula National Park. You must reserve your backcountry campsite and pay a small fee for camping in the National Park. If you are backpacking, ensure that you are in good shape. The rocky terrain can make this journey treacherous and it can be slippery in wet weather. Campfires are not permitted and all drinking water must be treated. You must camp on the provided tent platforms because this is an ecologically sensitive area. Wear good hiking boots and watch for the Mississauga, a venomous rattlesnake that inhabits this area. Scott, I want to thank you for being our guide through the National Park today. We had a great time out here. Took us out to the grotto, which we, we got a chance to climb down. Didn't know if we were going to make it, but we got out there and tried it, and, and you got us down. I appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, it's just been a, a great time out here. And I think that what people need to know is that you don't have to be up here hiking the trail like we are. You can just come up to the park itself, visit the park, and go down there, too. Tom, it's been my pleasure. Uh, you know, Parks Canada works really hard to keep special places like this uh, available and intact and healthy for people to come and enjoy. So it's my pleasure to, to welcome you here. I had a great time, too. Good, and it's time for us to get on the trail again and get going. We got a lot more to show you. We headed to Dyer's Bay just a few miles down the peninsula where we would meet our guide for the rest of the trip, Darcy Lombard. The day had turned gray and a little windy, so before we continued our hike, we decided to soak up some of Lake Huron's darker moods and enjoy what nature was bringing and took a walk on the dock. When we met up with Darcy, she was giving some instructions to new hikers before we set off on the trail. I don't know if you know a lot about the Bruce Trail, but it is a trail that starts at Queenston, right uh, close to Niagara Falls, and follows the Niagara Escarpment all the way up to Tobermory at the tip of the Bruce Peninsula. And there, um, that covers over about 800 and 850, 890 kilometers wow. approximately of trail. And then there's side trails as well, which is around 500 kilometers of side trail. So there's a lot of trail mm. to, to hike. It's some wildlife to keep your eyes up for. We have a really special critter here. Uh, it's a Massasauga rattlesnake. If you hear a little buzzing sound, just stop and um, have a look around because we want to give that particular snake a wide berth. Just um, we don't want to step on anything, but um, that one we need to be careful of. They're very docile snakes, but just I just wanted to let you know that um, we need to keep our eyes open for that. And if we're really lucky, we'll see one today. They're pretty shot. I'd love to hike the whole trail from end to end, which uh, I can never do in the summer because I'm working here, <laughs> which is, <laughs> this is a work day for me too. I, I like to do this uh, once a week. I plan hikes and it's great to see all of you out. And um, it's my excuse to get get out of the office and, and enjoy the outdoors as well. I don't know about anybody else. I'm getting kind of anxious here. Are you here. excited? Yeah, we I am. on our way. I will, um, I let's get going. And uh, like cool. I said, we'll stop along the way. I'll show you all kinds of stuff and uh, we'll have a great day. Everybody ready? Okay, ready? Yeah. All right, let's go. As we hiked the trail, we noticed that there was an ever-changing terrain. From rock to dirt to scenic bluffs, it was a trip for anyone that loves being outdoors. Something really important to know, so you know where you're going, um, is how the trail is marked, so you don't get lost. It's pretty simple. The, um, the whole trail, the main trail, is marked with a white blaze, so just imagine it looking like that if the trail is going straight. And they have a really neat way of signifying if there's a sharp turn. So if you're sharp turning to the left, it's to the left. If it's staggered the other direction, that means a sharp turn to the right. And if you see a white T, you're at the end of the trail, which you only see at Queenston or Tobermory. Um, and then if the blazes aren't white but blue, that just signifies a side trail and, and it's the same, same staggering for right or left or straight ahead for the end. So it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> if you love to hike and see beautiful scenic vistas, but you're not crazy about camping and would like to spend your nights in a little more comfort, well, they have the perfect setup for you on the Bruce Trail called the Home to Home Network. We hiked into Cape Chin, where we went with Ann Brad at the Country Inn, who gave us more information on this unique network. I am Tom. It's Pleased good to meet, meet you. you. Good Welcome. to meet you. Welcome. I didn't, we were out on the Bruce Trail, of course, and we're doing the hike, and I just wanted to tell everybody one of the best ways to do it is to come out here. You don't have to do any camping out. You can actually come out to the B&Bs, and, yes. and I believe they call it a home-to-home. -home. Yes, they are. It's a home-to-home -home network. A home-to-home -home network. Well, maybe you could tell everybody what it's all about. Yes, well, you come in like yourself, you walk in, or you can book ahead, and you can have your luggage moved ahead for you, or where you stay the first night. 
and when you arrive the first night, you have dinner there, and then you go from the, that place to having breakfast in the morning, and then moving out and going to the next place, to walking to it, and your luggage is moved on for you, so you have to carry nothing with you but your small backpack. Okay, and so there are several along the way then? There's, we have them all the way along the trail. Okay, and this is the brochure you were showing me? That, yes, uh, yes. And, and so you, we can, uh, you can get one of these and that will give you an update before you get started as to the places you can go and you can set up your reservations right. ahead of time. Yes. That's what you want to do. Yes. Now what about people that are just out just here? Just walk in? Yeah. That can be looked after as well. Oh, very good. People that make you very welcome. So Thank it's you. an easy thing to do and we're here and we're ready for a rest and get cleaned up and have a nice dinner. Yes. Very good. What do you say and we all have? Of our, all of the homes have excellent cooks. There you go. Can't ask for anything more than that. At the end of a long day of hiking, a good meal is worth it. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Please come in. If you'd like more information on the Home to Home Network, you can find it at our website at www.greatgetaways.tv. Well, lunch was ready and we sat down to a wonderful hearty meal before we jumped back on the trail. We would move on to a spectacular place called Skinner's Bluff, where you could see forever. As we hiked through the woods, the ground was solid rock, and it was just amazing how the forest managed to spring up through it. It's the pot of gold at the end of an old logging road. For the first few miles, the water teases you. While walking the old logging road, you can see distant blue peeking through the trees. Not much was said as we were all filled with the excitement of what lies ahead. If you follow the bend in the forest, you will eventually walk along Skinner's Bluff, a long escarpment face that casts its view over White Cloud, Griffiths, and Hay Island. These lonely islands seem to magically appear, each rising its head above the blue waters towards the end of the trail. So we just went through some fabulous hardwood forest with a mix of sugar maple and oak, and now we have a spectacular view of wow. Georgian Bay and some wetlands and hardwood forest out in the distance. So we're just kind of out here in a rock, rock outcropping just, in here. Right on the edge, yep. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so watch your step. <laughs> There's no railings here. It's a underground That makes it nice, though. Yes. I mean, it's nice to get out to an area like this and not find a fence in front of you. Wow. Beautiful. Now, what bay have we got out here? This is Georgian Bay. OK. And uh, White Cloud Island. Very nice. Some, some working farmland here. Okay, that's what this uh, area that's kind of cleared is then, huh? And the wetlands, you can see it's, it's a, bit, a bit mushy. Oh, yeah, you can see that. You, know, you can almost see the sign of a, a little creek maybe going through down there, too. Wow, you guys, this is an amazing look at Look at I'm just, I'm literally hanging over the edge here, and I'm probably 80 feet up, up over the canopy. <laughs> it looks like it's at least that far, yeah. It, far. it feels like it anyway from up here. Absolutely. Now, the Bruce Trail actually runs uh, for quite a distance, doesn't it, Darcy? It does, yeah. We, it's, the fit, trail officially starts in Queenston, down south, really close to Niagara Falls. Follows this escarpment edge all the way through southern Ontario and ends in Tobermory, which and the total trail, the main trail is about 890 kilometers of trail. Wow. So it's a great trail system. It is, it's fabulous. And then there's side trails as well. That totals another 400 and some odd. Yeah, it's it's impressive. So it's a lot of hiking. You, you, you don't get tired of it. Now here in the Bruce County, how many uh, kilometers do we have here? Over 150 um, kilometers of, of trail in this area from Wyatoo North. Does a lot of it look like this? It's a, it's a variety. Some of it looks like this, and some of it you, you get to inland lakes. A lot of it you're right, look, as opposed to looking down into the field, you're looking right into Georgian Bay, and then you can see beyond, because the, the bay, the water is so clear, mm -hmm. you can see down. It's, yeah, and that would be just up and farther north, it's like that. Now, it's, people that are going to come up here and would like to try the trail, what's the best way to uh, acclimate them towards it? Well, a good start, it, as, like any trail, is to have a reference guide, and, and this um, this one that I've been carrying here, it just um, it's an awesome guide from the beginning to end, or you know, the whole trail. Mm -hmm. it, it covers, it has individual pages that come out, and it shows you how to get to the trails, mile markers, the distances, and um, gives you little descriptions of where you can stay along the trail, you know, where you can access the trail. 
Um, that's that's from south to, to north. That covers everything. And then locally, we also we also publish. The Peninsula Club publishes a, a day hike guide as well, so you can pick that up and take out pages from Wyerton to Tobermory, and you can you can do that as well. How and, how much should people know about hiking before they try to come out to something like this? Well, it's always good to be prepared, uh, knowing knowing the territory you're going into, knowing you know how long you're going to be away, what kind of you know, you need your water and, and sturdy boots. That's something that I really recommend here is, is great footwear because it is quite rugged in this area. So it's not, uh, it's not flat and then easy, easy hiking all the time. So it's Sure, yeah, our, our club guides hikes as well, and um, I, you know, I'm the owner-operator of a campground at Miller Lake at Summerhouse Park, and I take people out every week on hikes, usually for two, three hours, so it's, if, you're, if you like camping and you want to come up and camp and then want to learn what to do up here, you know, I, I can show you different things you can do on your own, or you can join me, like you have up today, and... Uh, I, I, I know, share as much as I know. <laughs> right, and that was a yeah. nice part about it because uh, I can come up here and walk through the woods. There's a lot of times I'm, I'm looking at the beauty of it, but I don't understand a lot about it. And, and having somebody like you along to explain different things that are going on, I mean, you're picking out trees, you're picking out birds, so having that information is nice. Yeah, it's good, and I always learn some every time I go to. There's always an, an expert on something in the group that uh, we all share, and it's always very casual um, and you know, sharing the information. And I'm not an expert in any particular field, but uh, it's a start. And I always carry a pack of, that's why my pack is always, <laughs> I always have guidebooks and then keep binoculars and camera. And, I mean, those are things you don't want to forget to bring as well. On your return, don't forget to walk the trail to the Bruce Caves, one of the few ancient sea caverns that still remain completely natural on the trail. There are no stairs or viewing platforms. You can rock scramble your way to every corner of this cavern. It was a beautiful day. Blue skies and fluffy white clouds reflecting off the waters of Colpoy Bay. And there in all its glory was the statue made in honor of this town's famous son, Wyerton Willie. Wyerton Willie is the town mascot and the Canadian version of Punxsutawney Phil. I wonder if this rodent is any more accurate than his American cousin. Well, that was certainly quite a trip down the peninsula. And of course, uh, we know we're home because here's Wyerton Willie. Yes. Yeah, this is it. The trail actually, Tom, is goes right into Wyerton, right past Wyerton Willie. So depending yes. on which way you're going, we're coming down. So we're, this is it. And what a end. great trail it was out there. We've seen spectacular scenery, beautiful woodland areas. And Darcy, I want to thank you for being with us My because pleasure. we learned so much about the trail with you out there with us like that. It was a great day. We had some beautiful weather and I hope yeah. you enjoyed the Bruce Peninsula and the Bruce Trail. Oh, I certainly did. And Chris, I know you had a good time. I was watching you do it. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it's spectacular. If, you know, for a day hike or for a five, seven, ten day hike, this is this is a major destination if you're into the outdoors and if you want to explore the Bruce Peninsula. There's no better way to get up close and intimate with the peninsula than the Bruce Trail. It really is, you know. So whether you're up here hiking or just up here on a vacation for other things, Take some time, go out on the trail. There's spectacular overlooks that you can go to. And uh, of course, if you want more information, want to know where some of those places are at, you can go to our website at greatgetaways.tv. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. If you enjoyed today's show and would like more information for your own great getaway, you can get a free guide by calling the number on your screen. You can also get instant information at our website including video clips of today's show, maps of the trails we rode, including information that we put together on what to bring and how much time to allow for each part of the trip.